Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and we're continuing with the 2017 AP Physics 1 uh, free response questions. So let's get started. We're on number three here. Um, okay, so the left end of a rod of length D and rotational inertia I is attached to a frictionless horizontal surface by a frictionless pivot as shown above. Point C marks the center of the rod. The rod is initially motionless, but is free to rotate around this pivot. Okay, so it kind of swings up and down. A student will slide a da disc of mass M toward the rod with velocity V not perpendicular to the rod, and the disc will stick to the rod at distance X from the pivot. The student wants the rod disc system to end with as much angular speed as possible. Suppose the rod is much more massive than the disc. To give the rod as much angular speed as possible, should the student make the disc hit the rod to the, to the left of point C at point C to the right? To the right, uh, more torque this way. Because um, the, the more it is to the right, um, it's, it's, it's force times distance is the amount of torque. So the further it is, then the more, um, more torque, it will exert the same amount of force, but uh, it'll be a larger torque uh, acting on, or a larger torque impulse acting on it. So on the internet, a student finds the following equation for the post-collision angular speed omega of the rod of this situation. Regardless of whether the equation for angular speed is correct, does it agree with your qualitative reasoning in part A? In other words, does this equation for omega have the expected dependence? So what we think is in A, it's to the right would increase omega, right? So as x increases, um, omega increases, so yes, omega is larger for larger x. See, larger x is more to the right, right? If, if x is larger, then omega goes up um, in this equation because x is in the numerator. Another student deriving the equation for the post-collision angular speed omega of the rod makes a mistake and comes up with this. Without deriving the correct equation, how can you tell this equation is not plausible? In other words, that it does not make physical sense and explain your reasoning. Okay, um, so there's probably a couple ways you can look at this. One thing I notice is the mass of the disk on the, is on the denominator. But the bigger the disk is, you would expect it to hit it harder and make it spin faster, right? Like if I threw like a, a bowling ball at the thing with a, the same speed, right? It should like make it spin faster. So this one is um, M disk increasing should increase omega. But it doesn't because a uh, larger M disk will decrease omega because on it's on the denominator. Um, the other, th that's probably enough of an explanation. Um, the other ones make sense, right? As the velocity increases, uh, it would increase omega. And as X increases as further to the right, then omega would increase. As D increases, um, it would decrease omega because um, it's a little unintuitive as D increases, but as D increases, it's sort of like um, there's more mass distributed over here. So um, it would kind of like slow it down. It would be hard to make the, it, it's really that the, ro the rod would be heavier. And if it was heavier, then uh, it wouldn't move as, as much with the same amount of impulse. Um, and then uh, rotational inertia. Well, if rotational inertia is higher, then it means it's harder to rotate. That's what rotational inertia means. It's kind of like, the equivalent of mass. The more massive it is, the harder it is to accelerate. In here, the more rotational inertia, the harder it is to rotate. But this is saying the more rotational inertia uh, increases omega. So I is actually also wrong. I'm not gonna write it, but you could write rotational inertia should be on the denominator because as I increases, omega should decrease. Okay, let's see you think of that. And I think this question had another part when I was uploading on the paper. Okay, for parts D and E, do not assume that the rod is much more massive than the disc. Immediately before colliding with the rod, the disc's rotational inertia, that's I, I'm gonna write I there just so I know, is this. And its angular momentum with respect to the pivot is that. Derive an equation for the post-collision angular speed omega of the rod. Okay, so before I have some angular, so if I look at the whole system, I have angular momentum. And angular momentum, like linear momentum, is conserved before. 
So um, if I go back to the previous screen I look, um, as the disc um, is moving, relative to this pivot, this rod isn't moving. So this is the only thing with any angular momentum. And they gave you sort of some equations for that. And then after it hits, then um, there's angular momentum is conserved. Um, so let's see. So immediately before, the, an angular momentum is given by L is equal to I omega. It's similar to linear momentum, MV. It's just there's a corollary. Instead of mass, I do moment of rotational inertia. Instead of velocity, I do angular velocity. So the initial angular momentum is this, m disk x squared. And, oh, wait, actually, they just gave it. And its angular momentum with respect to the pivot is this. Um, So they gave you the angular momentum already, m disk v naught x. And that's going to be equal to, oh, are they saying, what happens to the, you need to know how the collision interacts. Um, oh, and the disk will stick to the rod. Okay, it says right here, the disk will stick to the rod. Okay. Now, after the collision, immediately after the angular momentum, there's a, some omega for the whole system. Then you got to look at um, what's, what's the i for the combined system. It's i plus, it's the i of the rod, which is this i, plus the rotational inertia of the disk, which is m disk x squared. So I didn't make myself enough room. So this is L, this is I times omega, okay? But I in this case is the rod and the disc sticking together. And the net total uh, rotational inertia of this thing is the rotational inertia of the disc. This is the I of the disc. Uh, not of the disc, of the rod. And this is the I of the disc. And you just add the two rotational inertias together, okay? So omega, solving for omega, I get omega equals m disk v naught x over i plus m disk x squared. Okay. E, consider the collision for which your equation in part t was derived, except now suppose the disk bounces off backward of the rod instead of sticking to the rod. Is the post-collision angular speed of the rod with the disk bounce off greater than, less than, or equal to the post-collision angular speed? it's going to be greater because what's going to happen is instead of this system where they're both moving together you're going to have this thing moving that way and the disc moving this way now <clears throat> the, the the net angular momentum of this and this have to be the same because they started off with the same angular momentum from the disc sliding right it's just one is the disc sticks to it the other is this way because this has angular momentum in the opposite direction, this angular momentum must be higher, okay? So first, the angular momentum is higher. Second, it doesn't have the mass sticking to it. So it ha not only has more angular momentum, it has a smaller rotational inertia, which again would increase omega. So in this case, um, um, it has the same net total uh, angular momentum but the disk is ne has now negative angular momentum because it's moving in the opposite direction right what which way is positive it has to do with the rotation of the system right if I assume this direction is positive then any rotation this way is negative, and the disk is kind of rotating in the negative direction. Momentum. So L of the rod is higher. And I won't ignore, which implies omega is higher. I mean, you also have to justify that I is also lower of the rod. <clears throat> 
compared to I of rod plus disk. It's easier to rotate the rod by itself than the rod with the disk. Okay, so let's look at some of the scoring guidelines for question three. Question one to the right of C and an explanation that the torque on the disk or angular momentum of the disk is greater. Number two, <clears throat> yes. Um, omega increases with bigger x. That's what we said. Um, correctly included is wrong is because of the dependence on m disk, i, or both. Okay, so m disk and i were the two parameters that were incorrect. Part D, using conservation of angular momentum. Uh, for indicating the angle is equal to m disk for initially correct, uh, do, 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 do. they didn't. Where's the answer? For indicating correct rotational inertia. <clears throat> okay, and greater than. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm a little um, surprised they didn't ask for an answer in D. I mean, we set it all up correctly, so. Okay, cool. Well, I thanks for watching. I hope that was informative on this question. Angular momentum is a tricky one for AP Physics 1. A lot of people, um, it's something that was added from the Physics B to Physics 1 transition. So some curriculum still haven't quite caught on and taught it particularly well. So I know torque and angular momentum can be a, a kind of a tricky question. But uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please leave a comment, like, or subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next free response question. Thanks.